Is this going? Yeah, he's got him in the jungle. Alright, hey, just keep pretending, dude. Yeah, keep pretending. Fake, fake the pump. Tell me when you're ready. Just rolling. Alright, hey, welcome back to another episode of the Switch Suspension TV show. This episode, we are featuring the 1972 Chevy C10 Stepside Truck, Twin Turbo, Nelson Racing Motor, 2415 inch road, badass machine. Jason was working on the Stepside Fenders. Extending the front side of them, dropping the body line down, making it all match up with the cab. Also working on the uh, framework for the bed floor and uh, the fuel tank filler area uh, sheet metal as well. We uh, brought in some hired guns. Brad Builds came in doing the exhaust for us and all the turbo piping, building intercooler, a lot of stainless work. We finished up Dino's 64 Pro Street truck. So he came by, picked it up, and uh, we had a little fun in the parking lot. Hey guys, again, thank you for watching. We appreciate it. Make sure you like and subscribe. I'm getting some lunch. Are you there yet? How about now? How about now? Hey, Bendejo! <laughs> I'm still right here in my bay. So where we're at on the build is we're right here in the bag. James is cleaning it up for me. Looks like he's cleaning my lift too. I'm not sure how you want me to start it off. All right. <laughs> hey guys, Jason over here at Switch Suspension. Uh, still working on the 1972 Chevy C10. Been on it for a little while, got everything pretty much done under the hood for now. Had Brad come in, he's been, he started working on the exhaust. And nothing goes on the front of this, so. Yeah, these are cool. I tightened that stuff for you. Yep. You guys have D-bands for the turbos yet or no? Uh, I do not. He didn't think you had them for the, the waste or that. No, I don't think we do. Pretty much put it in on the turbo, make all my spacing right where I want the tube to sit, and then put a couple marks across where I'll tack it. Uh, turbo down pipes for a twin turbo system. Pretty much a three inch down pipe. Mocking it up right now with all three inch V-bands, all stainless steel. We got two guys heavy on the twin turbo truck right now. So we've got Brad, we brought Brad in here to do the turbo uh, intake, all the exhaust, the intercoolers, basically all the turbo piping. So we got Brad working kind of on the front on that, and then we've got Jason in the back. We're gonna extend the rear fenders, the step side fenders. We drop them down an inch. So today we're using laser beams as the glasses. Everyone always be safe. Um, laser, actually using a laser level to get a straight edge for the body line on the truck so I know exactly where to move the body line on the fender to. Uh, to kind of make up, try to, try to even up the bottom of the cab with the step, the step side step. And then we're also now moving down the body line on the fender uh, so that it matches up better with the cab because the fenders have been raised up as well. So a lot of work going on on this truck right now. Yeah, I, I hate that guy. I just, I don't know, when I see him, I just want to punch him. Instead of coming out with a 90 here, you need a super tight radius or you can cut it into 245s and you can just kind of rock it where you need it and have this rotated down just a little bit more, the actual wastegate. But that's what I'm saying, if I clock this down a little bit, I can come out at a 45 and then shoot it up like that straight into it, you know? The underhood is extremely tight, so it's it's a pretty difficult shot to get out of those turbos up and over the fender wells, back down and inside the frame. So he's been doing a lot of tricky stuff. Uh, it's going to turn out pretty cool, I think. Excited to see how that's going to look. Very nice, dude. They're going to be a little bit different about this here. Yeah. All yeah, I was a little nervous about this side. Yeah, so Brad's been, Brad's been working on the exhaust. Um, he, he brought in a bunch of bends, 
Uh, just been fitting everything, getting everything to fit through there. I made some uh, I made some good mounts for the air system. You know, your average guy running around is excited if he's got 500 horsepower. This is almost so, double that on the low setting. I was on the phone with the owner of this truck and Tom Nelson, Nelson Racing, and the owner is super concerned about us building new intercoolers that are smaller because he's like, don't those have to be big, you know, to keep the air charge cool? And Tom was all, look, man, you're gonna fucking get in this thing hard for about three seconds. And he's like, you won't want to do it no more after that. <laughs> he saw, you ain't gonna have time to heat it up. You know, he's like, you, he's like, you'll be a fucking smoke screen behind you, and you're gonna be going too fast. Got the the head pipes done. We're waiting on a few parts for him to get back and finish that up. Now I've moved on to the bed. I've got the uh, wheel tubs made. Got the rear panel done. Started framing out the bed floor. Um, <laughs> so now we're just finishing everything in and there, getting everything to fit. Uh, the bed sides were a little bit wavy from sitting for so long with the big cutouts in them, so I had to do a little bit of square work on that. It's a lot of work. So now we're talking like, what do we do? Can we do something in the back or do we not? I would fucking put it on and lay it out, put the and wheel in there and just, well, just look at it. Like yeah. If it bugs you, then you gotta do something. Yeah. If not, maybe it's not a big deal. When you're building these step sides, and you want to put a 24 by 15 tire in it, there's a lot that goes into getting them low because with a step side, you've got, or with a fleet side, you've got a lot more room to bring that tire up inside the bed. The step side, you run into this a lot quicker than you do on a you know, straight side bed, so. Gotta get my metal for the day. If I, if I can make something out of it. There's my, there's my week's worth of work. So this is where it all starts for me. Um, a nice flat piece of sheet metal and a piece of paper. A uh, little bit of little bit of hammering, a lot of a lot of really nice tools, and, and a tiny little bit of skill. Uh, that's all I got. Then it becomes whatever the whatever the current project is. I mean, we have all the metal on on these trucks. It all starts off this way. So this is one of the uh, inner fender tubs for the uh, for the step side truck that I'm working on and uh, this is what everything becomes after uh, after a little bit of work on it. Then of course the monsoon comes and everything gets rusty. You're gonna do a burnout. Just a little brake torque in a second all the way in first and just let it happen. Okay. It comes to life. I did it down there yesterday. About 245 right there. <laughs> 245, and I'll get to three in a minute. So I'm a little ahead now. See, like 218. So I'm about two, 245 now. I'll get to three o'clock. 218, I'm good. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another segment of Know About It. Today we're gonna to be talking about some ABS switch boxes. I have a three, seven, and nine switch box in front of me. The main question I get asked is what's gonna be correct for your application? Your three switch box is gonna be perfect for either a all front setup or all rear setup. Your middle button is gonna be used for all rear down and then the other one will be right rear down or left rear down. These are very simple setup. If you're doing a full car, 
Uh, seven switch is gonna be what you're looking for. It is, you know, got all the different options for all up, down, and then each individual corner, as well as front up, down, rear up, down. The AVS 9 switch has the same features as the 7 switch, as well as all left up, down, and all right up, down. Depending on your manifold, these can be plug and play, but it all depends what manifold you run. As you can see on the 9 switch, there is a big box that will receive an AVS harness to be plug and play to a certain valve. The three and the seven switch will come with the butt connectors on it to get it all wired in with the diagrams on what color coordinates to what corner. In the wiring, AVS does have a wire in here if you want to get it plumbed for a remote system. So you wire it into your alarm so once you set it, it all airs out. So if you're at the show and you want to lock your car, walk away, it automatically will dump and just lay out. These are a very popular controller that we sell here at Switch Suspension. We do keep these in stock in black. They are available in other colors. These can be purchased on the Switch Suspension website under Air Suspension Management, Switch Boxes and Controllers. For more, look us up on www.switchsuspension.com. Oh man, would you look at the time. Don't forget to like, subscribe, watch some of the other videos, and we got a good one coming next week as well. Stay tuned. Uh, the front side of them, dropping the body line down, making it all match up with the cab. Um, Soft. So close. Pretty straight to me. Looks pretty damn straight to me. <laughs> <laughs>